Wade from Black Tie Barn exposed. Well, his winning candle secrets at least. Here's four lessons I've learned from watching Wade's fantastic YouTube channel. And if you don't know who Wade is, Wade is from Black Tie Barn. It's a candle company he's been running for about a decade. So he's been in the game for a long time. He's very knowledgeable about candles. He's got a good YouTube channel with loads of information on there. So go check it out. No shade to Wade. Let's continue with the video. So when I first started candle making, it was a nightmare and my candles were rubbish. Sinkholes, wet spots, you name it, I had all of the problems. And there's so much information everywhere, it's incredibly confusing. So what do I do? I hop onto my trusty Steed YouTube to find this guy. He seemed down to earth, relatable, and had a wealth of candle knowledge. It was super helpful in the beginning, and I'm thankful for the work he's put into his YouTube channel. So let's begin with the lessons I've learned from Wade. Lesson number one, build a story about your products. Now, for me, this one hits really hard. It's something I've been applying to my own candle brand recently. And as I've mentioned in other videos, branding is everything. You need to stand out in a sea of nice candles. And previously I was making just that, nice candles, but they faded into the feed. So how do you get people's attention? You need scroll stopping products. It's easier to sell to a specific niche rather than trying to sell to everyone. That's been my biggest problem so far. So. What makes you unique? What interests do you have that other people don't? What value can you add? And what twists can you add to your candles just to make them stand out? Wade says, in the beginning, it's really important just to niche down, find your people. Authenticity is key with this also. So for me, I'm a nerd. I love Lord of the Rings, fantasy books, the films. I've gone all in on bookish based candles. I'm finding my people, people that resonate with me, my story and my products. The products I'm making become sort of an extension of themselves. The candles align with their values and it's just something that speaks to them. So be yourself, don't oversell yourself and be true to your word and your brand. Focus on your purpose, not just your products and your pricing. So there's a video that Wade did a while ago with dude candles, have a look at that and just see how branding and niching down works. He focuses specifically on man candles and sort of like a vest and vibe and it's totally working. So the last tip from Wade on candle branding is an email list. Start utilizing and building a newsletter, collect those emails. It's a great way to build rapport and build your brand. If I'm honest, it's something I've not been doing for the past few years, I've not done anything with email branding and it's because I didn't know where to start. I didn't have a brand, I didn't have identity, so I didn't know what to tell my customers. But now I do, I know exactly kind of what I can get excited about and what I can get my customers excited about. So it gives me a specific idea in terms of email marketing. So don't sleep on it like I did, but I'm gonna make up for lost time. Lesson number two, how to get a good scent throw. So when we make candles, we want them to smell great. But a recent revelation of mine is something I love from Wade, not all candle fragrances work with soy wax. So I was banging my head against the wall with this one. I'd be trying to get certain fragrances to work, but they just couldn't, they wouldn't. And I thought it was me. I thought I was the problem. It was my processes, my candle making. Maybe candle making just wasn't for me. Maybe I'm just missing something, but not everything is compatible. Soy wax is a fickle beast. Certain fragrances just won't work with it. And that little piece of information, that bit of knowledge, has finally brought me a bit of peace. So with that said, the best way to get a good hot throw is through good quality fragrance oils and waxes using good quality ingredients. From my own experience, the more expensive the fragrance oil, the ones that are designed specifically for candle making are a little bit more potent and do have a better scent throw. But this isn't always the case. Some of the cheaper ones do work, you just have to sift through them. You have to find the flamingo in a flock of pigeons. It does take a bit of work, but there are some bangers. But spending a bit of time working with some good quality ingredients and just finding what works for you is really, really key. And that comes down to spending a lot of time testing. Now we've gone over the quality materials. Wicking is the next step and potentially the most frustrating. <laughs> if the wick is dying out, you'll never get a good enough melt pool. The candle's gonna tunnel and you're just not gonna get a good smelling candle. On the other hand, if you have a wick that's burning too hot, it's gonna burn off a lot of the fragrance oil, it's gonna burn through the wax too quickly, and it's gonna present a fire hazard. So it's a fine balance with wicking in order to get a good scent throw. Also the jars, jars shape and sizes play a big difference too. The bigger the candle, 
the bigger the milk ball and therefore the bigger the scent throw you're going to get so you're going to get a better smelling candle however smaller candles you will still get a scent throw but it might only be useful for like a smaller room like a bathroom or something there's going to be sort of environmental aspects as well which are going to make a difference if you're burning a candle in the kitchen it's going to be competing with a lot of different smells so there's a lot to a scent throw if you listen to those few tips and apply those you'll be able to make better smelling candles in no time lesson number three longevity this is a big one and it's something a lot of us new to candle making we just can't cut our heads around the struggle to comprehend we are comparing ourselves to someone that's done this for years i'm three years in and i'm comparing my success to someone like wade who's been in the game for over a decade now time compounds and you simply can't compare yourself to someone who has that much time under their belts the longer someone does anything the better they're going to get at it their skills improve their marketing improves their customer base expands you get the idea you just need to stick at one thing and keep doing it you will improve it is inevitable but time time is where it comes into play it's that consistency sticking at it doing it over and over and over again doubting yourself but just keeping up with that process and whether it's improving your sales copy learning how to take better photos, improving your candles. Just keep at it and keep improving it. Everything will get better in time. Time compounds. Longevity is the key to winning. And lesson number four, having a reference point. Let me explain this one. So candle making for a lot of us is a lonely pursuit. It's something we pick up as a hobby or something we want to start as a business, but we don't have anyone to teach us. So we go online. So I've been using someone like Wade and a few other YouTubers as sort of reference points in terms of how my candles should perform, what a good milk ball looks like and what a good candle should look like. Being able to look at videos and see the test burns, the information, I can compare my candles sort of in real time and adjust and learn from them and just see where I'm going wrong and just work out what I need to do. So earlier on when I said don't compare yourself to others, I might have been slightly hypocritical. Comparing how your candles burn and how they work to others will help you create better candles and improve your candle business. So having something like YouTube and having a place where you can look at other candle makers is something that wasn't around years and years ago. So we are living in the golden age of information. There is nothing you can't teach yourself. You just need to keep applying that information and trying to learn new things. Having a reference point also helps you troubleshoot. It helps you troubleshoot problems such as tunneling, underwicking, wet spots. These were all words that I didn't really understand in the beginning. I was like, what the hell is a wet spot? So just having someone online explain these things to you is amazing. And sometimes just by watching other people like Wade, you realize even top candle makers have the same problems I have and you might have. We're all human, we're all trying to make our own journey and we're all on our own sort of path to financial freedom or just creating nice candles as a hobby. So it really is just going back to that thing of spending a bit of time on YouTube and learning what you can from all the people there. There are other people that have done what you want to do, so there's no reason why you can't achieve what you want to do. So like I said, <laughs> there's four main lessons from this. So branding, who are you? What's gonna make you stand out? What is your thing? Improving your scent throw, go back to the basics, learn how they work and just spend a bit of time on those things. Longevity, the longer you do something, the better at it you're gonna get. And using YouTube as a tool, as a reference point, use it so you can learn. Stand on, <laughs> stand on the information of the people that have done it for you and use it for your advantage. And that brings us to the end of the video. I apologize for the clickbaity title and the thumbnail. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you found it useful. There are people like Wade and there are other candle makers that have got a wealth of knowledge. So check out their channels and see what they've got to say. Like I said, it's a great place to learn and it's what I wanna do. I wanna offer value. I wanna share my journey, share behind the scenes and just you guys can watch me as I grow my business. You can see the mistakes I'm making and you can see the progress I'm making almost, well, in real time, but a couple of weeks behind because I can't publish videos that quickly. So that's what I wanna do. I just wanna share my journey. And if I can do it, literally anyone else can do it. It is possible. And if someone like Wade's made it, someone like Stanley Hand Crafting's done it, there's a few other candle makers. If they've done it, they've made it into a full-time business, then it's possible. It just takes time, it takes longevity. I think that is the main lesson I've learned from watching everyone. Even people like Alex Hormozzi, longevity is the key. The longer you do something, the better at it you're gonna get. So I'll see you later, bye-bye.